Hello, I'm Shana Loya, electrophoresis and immunodiagnostics product manager here at Helena Laboratories. Helena has a long history of providing educational support media to empower our customers with proficiency in our assays. In this brief video, we will delve into the technical aspects of operating the Spiffy Touch semi-automated analyzer to perform Spiffy protein electrophoresis assays. It will encompass both serum, urine, and CSF protein electrophoresis procedures. Please keep in mind that the printed instructions for use included in your kit are always right. Always familiarize yourself with and follow the current procedure. Let's kick off by presenting our product lineup. Our gels come in two variations, one designed for five band separation, known as classic protein electrophoresis, and the other for six band separation, referred to as split beta protein electrophoresis. Our kits cover a range of testing volumes from as few as 20 samples per gel to as many as 100 samples per gel. Kits are supplied with sufficient materials to conduct 10 gel runs and come in two parts. Part one contains the printed procedures, 10 gels, a package of Spiffy Blotter C, one vial of acid blue stain, and one package of citric acid D stain. Part two contains an adequate quantity of 20 sample blades corresponding to the kit size ordered. Displayed are additional items provided by Helena, which are essential for running the protein electrophoresis assays. Sample trays are available in varying configurations depending on the number of samples to be processed per gel. We also offer added flexibility of template application for CSF and urine samples. Preparing the solutions is a straightforward process, with clear instructions provided on the reagent packaging. To prepare the citric acid D-stain, begin by filling the large D-stain vat with 11 liters of deionized water. Pour the D-stain package into the vat and gently shake the vat to ensure complete dissolution before use. The D-stain should be connected to valve 2 of the Spiffy Touch. For the acid blue stain, start by preparing 1 liter of 5% acetic acid. Combine 950 milliliters of deionized water with 50 milliliters of glacial acetic acid and mix. Next, gently dissolve the acid blue powder into the liter of 5% acetic acid using a stir bar and stirring for 30 minutes or until completely dissolved. It's important to replace the acid blue stain after processing 10 gels to prevent contamination. Connect the acid blue stain bottle to valve 3 of the Spiffy Touch. We offer two options for protein electrophoresis controls, the SPE normal control, catalog number 3424, and the SPE abnormal control, catalog number 3425, which is a hypergamma control. Each includes 10 vials of lyophilized control and requires refrigeration at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. These controls play a vital role in verifying every step of the procedure and should be utilized in each gel run. For added versatility, if desired, you can dilute a control or patient sample at a 1 to 7 ratio with 0.85% saline, which is one part sample plus six parts saline, and then run it alongside CSF or urine specimens for a qualitative comparison. To prepare these lyophilized controls, simply reconstitute them with 2 milliliters of deionized or distilled water. After adding the water, gently swirl the vials to ensure thorough mixing and allow them to sit for approximately 20 minutes to completely dissolve. Once reconstituted, these controls remain stable for up to 5 days when stored at temperatures between 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. 
It's essential to treat the prepared controls in the same way you would an unknown specimen. You will find comprehensive instructions, expected values, and details about the total protein content of the reconstituted controls in the assay sheet provided within the control kit box. Now let's advance to the comprehensive step-by-step -step segment of the video, beginning with the spiffy touch setup for serum protein electrophoresis. While this video focuses on a 60 sample protein electrophoresis gel, we will also provide essential information for configuring other assay options. The spiffy touch consists of two distinct units, the separation unit on the right side and the stainer unit on the left side. These two sides operate independently, allowing you to perform electrophoresis for one method while simultaneously washing and staining a completely different method. Gel processing begins with the setup of the separation unit with sample blade applicators. Each blade applies up to 20 samples. The quantity and placement of blades needed is predicated by the number of samples being processed. Be sure that you do not touch the plastic teeth of the applicator blades as this may impact sample pickup and consequently the sample patterns. For 20, 40, or 60 samples per gel, insert a maximum of three applicator blades into the vertical slots marked 2, 8, and 14 within the applicator assembly. Add an applicator blade weight to each blade with the thicker side oriented to the right. For 80 or 100 samples per gel, place up to five applicator blades into the vertical slots numbered 2, A, 9, 13, and 16 within the applicator assembly. Add an applicator blade weight to each blade with the thicker side oriented to the right. Next, we will proceed with preparing the sample tray. The 20, 40, and 60 sample kits, which process up to three rows of samples, utilize the Spiffy Disposable Cup Tray, catalog number 3370, while the 80, 100 sample kits, processing up to five rows of samples, use the Spiffy 20 to 100 Disposable Cup Tray, catalog number 3366. Use the touch screen to move the applicator assembly to the right side of the instrument. Prepare the sample tray by sliding the disposable shallow well sample cup strips into the tray. Pipette samples into the rows of cups that correspond with applicator blade placement. If desired, the sample pipetting process can be automated by the S touch. Pipette the following volumes of samples per well. Control or serum, 15 microliters per well. Urine or CSF, 20 microliters per well. While pipetting the specimen, ensure to distribute the sample evenly by spreading it across the four corners of the well. Place the cup tray into the spiffy touch by aligning the holes in the tray with the pins on the instrument. The last step in preparation involves setup of the gel and the electrodes. Remove the gel from the protective packaging and remove the overlay. Dispense approximately two milliliters of rep prep on the left side of the electrophoresis chamber. Place the left edge of the gel over the rep prep, aligning the round hole on the left pin of the chamber. Gently lay the gel down on the rep prep, starting from the left and ending on the right side, fitting the aub round hole over the right pin. Use lint-free tissue to wipe around the edges of the plastic gel backing, especially next to the electrode posts, to remove excess rep prep. Make sure no bubbles remained under the gel.
Place a spiffy blotter C on the gel with the longer edge parallel with the gel blocks. Gently blot the entire surface of the gel using slight fingertip pressure. Remove the blotter. Clean the electrodes with deionized water before and after each use. Then wipe with a lint-free tissue. Place a carbon electrode on the outside ledge of each gel block outside the magnetic posts. Improper contact between the electrode and the gel block may cause skewed patterns. Close the chamber lid. Now it is time to begin the test. Use the arrows under separator unit to select the appropriate test and press start, then press start again. The spiffy touch will apply the samples, electrophoresis, and beep when completed. After electrophoresis is complete, open the chamber lid and use the gel block remover to remove the gel blocks. Replace the electrodes on each end of the gel to prevent curling during drying. Dispose of blades and cups as biohazardous waste. Close the chamber lid and press the continue button to dry the gel. Once dried, you are ready to stain. Open the chamber lid and carefully remove the gel from the electrophoresis chamber. And remove the gel holder from the stainer unit. Attach the gel to the holder by placing the round hole in the gel backing over the left pin on the holder and the oblong hole over the right pin on the holder. Place the gel holder with the attached gel facing backwards into the staining chamber. Use the arrows under stainer unit to select the appropriate test and press start. Then press start again. The instrument will stain, de-stain, and dry the gel. When the process is completed, the instrument will beep indicating the process is complete. Remove the gel holder from the stainer and scan the bands in a densitometer. Protein electrophoresis is also applicable to urine and CSF specimens, although special preparation is necessary for these samples. Urine samples may be run diluted, neat, or concentrated. Urine samples must first be shaken to homogenize, then centrifuge the desired volume at 2000 times G for five minutes. Remove the supernatant and concentrate to lab specifications per laboratory protocol. CSF samples may be used after proper concentration between 10 to 50 X. CSF and or urine specimens can be processed on a separate gel or on the same gel as serum samples utilizing either applicator blades or template application. To run CSF and or urine only on a gel using blade application, the procedure is exactly the same as described, but select the correct urine test on the separator side for three applications of the CSF and or urine samples. To run CSF and or urine samples alongside serum samples using blade application, when initially setting up the applicator blades, place applicators exclusively in the rows that correspond to the CSF or urine samples. Select the correct test on the separator side, press start, and then press start again to begin the test. After the third CSF and or urine application, the instrument will beep and stop. 
open the chamber lid, add an applicator blade in the remaining slots for the serum samples, and remove the CSF and or urine blades. Close the chamber lid and press continue. The instrument will apply the serum samples and the spiffy touch will continue processing the gel as usual. CSF and urine specimens with insufficient volumes for automated sample application may be run using template application. The spiffy urine alignment guide will need to be used to align the templates over the gel surface. After blotting the gel surface with the blotter C, carefully place the gel on the spiffy urine alignment guide. Examine the urine templates. The urine templates have been marked with a hole in one corner. Hold the template so that the marked corner is in the lower left position. Align the template pinholes with the pins on the sides of the alignment guide and carefully slide the template over the alignment pins until the template contacts the gel surface. Apply slight fingertip pressure across the template, making sure there are no air bubbles between the gel and the template. Gently remove the gel with the placed templates from the spiffy urine alignment guide and place the gel correctly onto the electrophoresis chamber. Wipe around the edges of the plastic gel backing, especially next to the electrode posts, to remove excess rep prep. Clean the electrodes with deionized water and wipe with a lint-free tissue. Place a carbon electrode on the outside ledge of each gel block outside the magnetic posts. And use the arrows under the separator unit to select the appropriate test and press start. Apply CSF and or urine by placing three microliters of each sample onto one of the 20 available slits on the CSF urine template. Close the chamber lid and then press start again. Sample application will be timed for 10 minutes. After sample application is complete, open the chamber lid and gently blot the unabsorbed urine from the urine template with the blotter A+. Carefully remove the blotters and templates and discard as biohazardous waste. Close the chamber lid and press the continue button to begin electrophoresis. The spiffy touch will continue processing the gel as usual. I hope this information was helpful to you. Again, please refer to the procedure included in your kit for the most up-to-date instructions. Helena is also ready to answer any additional questions you might have. A list of resources are listed below.